Mike Collins here. Today I'm joined by D- Dynamite Dan Ige, who returns to action UFC 289, 10th of June, facing Nate Lamweir. Dan, always a pleasure, my man. How are things for you today? Uh, uh, everything is great, man. I'm just, uh, I'm excited. We're uh, shoot, a couple weeks out from the fight, and um, I'm just pumped. I'm uh, I'm happy. I'm anxious, and uh, I can't wait to go out there and put on another great performance. 100%. Talking about great performances, we've got to obviously start with the with the last fight, the second round knockout over Damon Jackson. Um, your back was against the wall there, Dan, after the, the back-to-back losses over the last couple of years. How did it feel to get that get that win in January? Oh, it felt really good, Manny. I, it's like you, you mentioned, I went almost two years without a win, and just the amount of sacrifice, the amount of hard work, the amount of everything that I put into the sport, my dedication, and for it to not pay off for two years, um... Yeah, it really meant a lot to get that to get that W again. And uh but there wasn't a lot of pressure going in. You know, I just I kinda like let go of the pressure. I said, you know what, I, I have nothing to lose here. I've already I've already lost as much, you know, three times as I possibly could. And I knew I knew potentially losing could, you know, risk me losing my job. There's a lot a lot on the line on that side of uh, you know, of the atmosphere, but I, I don't I didn't really have too much pressure going into that. I just, I went out there and I, I knew my time was coming and I just felt really good. I felt in the moment. And um, those are just things I, you know, I, I put to work, I put to the test, you know, I spent a lot just training my mind again. Um, all the other stuff, the physical stuff, the technical stuff, it's the same. It's the basics. It's continuing to rep out the basics, but just training my mind and being able to be more present and more focused and, um, yeah, it really paid off and got a nice second round rock off KO and a bonus. So, you know, I couldn't have been more happier. It mightn't be your favorite win. It mightn't be the, the performance you're most happy with, but was that maybe the most satisfying victory of your, of your career? Yeah, I, I'd i say like the Gavin Tucker was, it was nice, but it was it was too soon. You know, mm-hmm. it just like it happened. It was cool. It was a walk off. I got a bonus, but this was nice because I really got to go out there and like, dance around for a little bit and um i think i could have ended it in the first two i hit him i hit him with a nice shot uh he called an eye poke so it, like i think that was the beginning to the end but mm-hmm. i know i hit him nice like i put my knuckle right into his eye and uh yeah they stopped the fight for like three minutes and mm-hmm. kind of took away from the momentum a little bit but i uh, i knew to just stay calm stay focused and as soon as the fight started again just get right back to the work right right back where I left off but yeah it was really satisfying just to go out there and just be complete and just be calm and relax and poise and show what I'm capable of and I, I think I did that 100% I've got to ask as well because it always kind of intrigues me with that first card background about second third week of January um what is the mentality going in because you obviously pres- presumably had to sacrifice a lot over the Christmas and New Year period I know you've got a young family does that add any extra any extra emotion any extra and anything extra going in um, a little bit, you know, it's all, I, I, I take it, I take it both ways. I kind of like, it's motivating to grind through the holidays and miss out, you know, miss out on the Christmas dinners, miss out on Thanksgiving, all the good stuff. Right. And, uh, you kind of use that as fuel and motivation, but at the same time, yeah, I do have a family and it, it sucks. It's unfortunate. And I have to explain to like other family members or friends that invite you to Friendsgivings and other Christmas dinners. And I'm like, yeah, I can't, I can't really, you know, I had one day to kind of enjoy food, but I have to stick to my regimen and um, I'm used to it. It's ever since wrestling in high school, we wrestled throughout the whole winter season. And um, so it's just something I was kind of used to, but at, at the same time, it, this is my job, you know, this is, this is my dream. And, I don't look like I don't look at it as I'm missing out on something because of, you know, certain holidays or certain days. I just it's just a day to me. And um, I still spend that quality time with my family. But at the same time, I'm I'm in the grind. I'm in the training camp. And my main focus is typically the fight. So uh, it's just kind of my life. I'm so used to it by now. But yeah. Of course. You mentioned that your family shout out to to Bami. He's probably two years of age now, presumably. Yeah, Bam just turned two in April, so he's uh, yeah, he's a monster, man. He's growing fast. He's they actually put him in 
they did some tests on him and um, they tested his motor skills. And I think they tested him to be, have the motor skills of a 47 month year old. So like a four year old, basically. Wow. <laughs> um, and he's two. So he's, uh, who, who knows, you know, we might have a future world champion or a baseball player or something. I don't, I, I don't know if I want him to fight, but if he wants to, he can of course, hundred percent. Well, obviously, turning the conversation back to the upcoming fight, as we mentioned at the start, you're facing Nate Lamweir in, in the tenth of June, UFC two eighty nine. Um, give me your scouting report on your upcoming opponent. What does he do well, and where do you think a potential areas you could exploit? I think he's, I think he's uh, pretty well rounded. You know, he's um, he's skilled. He's got a good gas tank. He's got good kicks, sneaky punches. Uh, pretty decent wrestling. Uh, good Darson Anaconda chokes. Um, so he's well-rounded, right? Um, I, uh, he's on a good run right now. I think four, four or five win streak. Um, he, he, he deserves this, you know, he deserves to fight up into the rankings. I, I know a lot of guys, especially ranked guys don't want to fight unranked guys or ranked guys don't want to fight guys below them. Um, I've, I see it differently. You know, I, I, I was given opportunities, so, you know, other people deserve opportunity at the same time it. I make the same amount of money, so I'm trying to rebuild my my name right now. I don't have to go fight number seven, and then now I'm fighting number three or four or whatever. You know, I don't have to fight those guys. I fought all those guys. I fought um, Calvin Cater, Korean Zombie, Josh Emmett, Mozart, all those guys in the top. I fought mm -hmm. those guys. So right now, I just you know, other guys deserve opportunity. We got to keep this division rolling, and at the same time, I'm trying to. You know, build my momentum back up, get another win, a win, a win, a win, and then we can start fighting up in the rankings. But you know, Nate, Nate's, uh, you know, Nate poses threats kind of everywhere. But I, I know if I go out there and just stay basic and um, don't let them get momentum, I can, I can take this fight. I can make it look easy. I, I I'm not gonna say it's an easy fight, but I, I believe I can go out there and make it look easy. Hundred percent. Um, obviously you mentioned the caliber of guy, caliber, caliber of guys. Excuse me, that you've been fighting over the. The, the last few years in your career obviously Nate is, is coming in on I think I believe it's a three fight win streak I think it's four of his last five um okay. have you been impressed by his by his recent performances or do you look at it and go the guys he's been fighting and, and finishing they're not on my level no nah, I, I mean dude this game this sport and game is so crazy like you really can't underestimate anyone I I think he's been impressive you know he's had some exciting fights that were fun to tune in like as a fan, if I'm just watching the sport as a fan, like I like watching him fight because he's he's fun, he's entertaining. Um, he doesn't want to have a boring fight, you know. That's just his like his, his personality. You know, he wants to go out there, he wants to make things exciting. That being said, I believe his his raw kind of authenticity, his charisma, got him in this position more than his fighting his fighting skills has. Um, uh, that being said, you know, he, he is he's, he's dangerous. He's dangerous. And if I if I get caught just not being mindful or, or being lazy or taking a round off or taking time off, like taking a moment off, like that's where he's most dangerous. So I, I just have to go out there and treat him like I'm fighting number one. You know, yeah. that's that's always my mindset is, well, it's kind of a new adopted mindset, actually, is just I'm the champ. These guys are facing me. I live each and every day as if I'm the champion. That's how I prepare. I prepare the same whether, whether I'm fighting Nate Landwehr or Alex Wolkanovsky. My preparation is going to be the best I can possibly prepare. So, um, I, you know, I don't look too much into it, how it's going to play out. I, I'm just prepared every single where the fight can go. Um, I'm, I'm polishing everything and... I'm prepared. If the fight has to go to the distance, I will be prepared to do so. Obviously, I want to go out there. I want to finish them. I want to. I want to make a statement. I want to get a bonus, and you know that's just what I do. No, hundred percent. What's also very interesting as well is the last man to defeat Nate Lamweir, your upcoming opponent, trains in Extreme Couture, your home base uh, in Julian GCJ Arosa. Um, yeah, you've been getting much working with with Julian. Obviously, that fight went pretty early, but have you been working with him at all? I actually have. We've been um he's been helping me out with some sparring rounds. Um I did three rounds in a row with him actually yesterday. We so we we basically fought. <laughs> <laughs> and 
in the week before, and then next week will be my last spar. But yeah, he he's been a great look. Um, someone who's been in there with him. I. I'm not so big about guys mimicking other guys. Like you can give a certain look and kind of a I want I want a guy's best self. So I when I when I spar with Julian, I'd be like, Julian, give me your best look. You know, you could throw in some like Nate Landwehr like style, like stuff that he does, but at the same time, don't go out of your way. That's gonna make your game like not as good, right? So I, I want him to be his best self. And Julian's dude, Julian's an animal. He's got a ton of experience he's got more experience than me he's got almost 40 pro fights um and yeah he has a ko over nate landwehr and i just uh he's a great guy to have in the, in the gym but aside from julian i got a ton a ton of guys i from every department from the wrestling from the grappling from the striking and i just try to get a little bit of the best of everyone and you know focus on the best of me <laughs> yeah. yeah no 100 percent um Obviously, you mentioned there about KOs. The last two last two wins have been in devastating fashion, walk-off KO kind of Mark Hunt, Roy Nelson style. Um, is there something you're doing differently? Maybe trying to put more power on those shots. Maybe doing something different in the training room that is that is causing these these knockouts, or is it just is it just you know are things paying off? If you like, no, I I think I've always honestly from day one I've had a raw like gift from God, like this raw power. And I, but I always tried to force it and it's actually taking power off, taking steam off of my shots that I'm able, like I'm knocking guys out. Like the hard, these hard, the hard shots aren't the ones that are not, are, that are knocking them out. It's the, the ones that I don't even think that's like the, the, the effortless punches that are the ones that are putting guys to sleep. So I, I, it, it comes down to trusting, trusting in my ability and just letting things go, you know, being throwing a little more volume. With a little more volume, there's a little more chances that that it happens. With a little more precision, you know, I I know I can I I will eventually land a clean shot. Um, but if I go out there hunting, throwing big right hands, big overhands, big leaping hooks, like those aren't necessarily the ones that will land, especially at the higher level. You know, these guys, everyone's so good now. Their defense is good. Um, so it's just mixing things up, mixing things up, and then eventually, yeah, I, can, I, I, I really. My first day at Extreme Couture, I hit. I don't Ray Steph. I wouldn't consider him like one of my head coaches or anything, but you know, I from, I've hit mitts with him from time to time, and I don't know if he was blowing smoke up my ass, but I know I know he was somewhat serious. But he's, he told me, <clears throat> he told me I reminded him of his little brother, uh, Ronnie Steffo, who is a light heavyweight and he said the way i punch there's just like an extra thud behind it there that that's different like mm -hmm. i hit like a heavier weight class kind of guy but i'm in a smaller body and that's like people tell me like oh you should go to 135 like no i i have like a big i have a big boy bone structure i'm mm -hmm. short you know i just got big feet big hands big limbs yeah. and my my punches are heavy. My kicks are heavy. I haven't shown everything, but um, I know I'm dangerous. So like when people start watching off on the right hand, the left hand will come. When people are looking for the left, the right hand will come. And when they're looking for both, then the knee or the kick or something else comes. But yeah, man, just trust trust in the process, trust in my ability, and I know good things will happen. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, where is your mentality? Going into this one, Dan, I mean, this is a similar position to the Gavin Tucker and the Damon Jackson fights, as you mentioned, you're defending your ranking against a guy not in the top 15. Uh, is this still a kind of rebuilding process from the, the difficult kind of couple, of, couple of years that you had, or is this is the mentality different than, than Tucker and, and Jackson? You know, I was trying to think about that. I'm like, I was at, literally like asking my wife or coach, I was like, how should my mentality be? I'm like, and then I, I really began to break it down. I'm like, I should there shouldn't be like any type of force persona or mentality. I'm just going, I'm going with the flow. I'm going how I feel. And that's when I, when I just, when I stay, when I, when I'm myself, when I stay true to myself, you know, that's when I perform at my absolute best. That's what it's all about for me. Mm -hmm. It's just stay true to myself. And um, I, I definitely am. I, I am in that rebuild process because, you know, one win was great. Everyone cheers for you. You're back on top. You know, oh my gosh, uh, 
the bonus money is nice. Getting your win money is nice. Um, but I'm trying to get ahead, man. I'm trying to get ahead mm -hmm. in life. When you go three losses in a row, like you don't really get ahead in life because I'm just trying to get back to surface level um, from a financial side. Right. Yeah. But from uh, from like a fighting side and, a, you know, the mental side, uh, I, I, one win isn't going to do it for me. I need to put together three, four, five, six fight win streak again, um, even more till I can really consider myself, you know, the top shark of this division. Um, I believe that in my head. I believe I'm the best, but yeah, there's a ton you have to prove in this sport. And you lose once, you lose twice, you lose three times, you're written off until you rebuild yourself. So, the Damon Jackson win was nice, um, but it's not going to end there. You know, I got Nate Landwehr next, and that's all I can really put my effort and focus into. And then we go from there and keep building. Of course. Do you do you like cowboy films, Tom? Sorry, what? Do you like cowboy films? Cowboy? Cowboy movies. I like movies? Yeah. yeah, I do. The reason why I ask is, is I was thinking about this before we jumped on. Um, when the cowboys are trying to rob the train, what do they use? They use dynamite. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. just thinking. I'm just putting two and two with your with yours and Nate's nicknames together, and that sounds like a perfect combination for a Danny Gay win. I don't know if you can read into that too much. No, I. It, it it's hundred percent. I I've thought about it. I thought of t-shirt ideas. Mm. Like, <laughs> I I know I have dynamite. I have the I have the capability to derail the train. Hundred mm. percent. Um, dynamite would be my weapon of choice for sure, but again, you can't let a train go get like it's hard to stop a train when it has momentum. So, except if you have dynamite, <laughs> <laughs> we've gone very far in, into this analogy, haven't we? Of dynamites and trains, yeah, but you know, it all comes back down to just you know, I can't let them get that momentum, and I. I'll be in control of the train, 100%. Well, turning the conversation back to yourself and the fighter ham for one final question, Dan. What I would like to do, and you can take this question however you like, is I would like you to give me a walkthrough of the perfect day on the 10th of June. So what happens from when you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep at night? So June 10th, when I wake up, um typically like to sleep in an, a little bit like mm -hmm. an hour past where, what I when I normally wake up go down I always text Eric first thing I'll send him an emoji like we send this emo uh, it's like this like gremlin face when it's fight day I send him an emoji he sends one back we he has this playlist that he always I don't I don't know if it's like a my like a mental thing but he he plays this playlist it's got like all these like Motown jams and like old school jams and then it, it just sets the tone it sets the tone for for a fight for a war and um so yeah we'll we'll, we'll kick on the jams uh, probably get some coffee some good espresso um move my body a little bit not too much I've done like hard shakeouts in the past but you know probably go out there just move around move my limbs around, get the blood flow in, walk around, breathe some fresh Vancouver air, um, have breakfast with the team. And once I have breakfast with the team, that's kind of our last like moment of like breaking bread together. And then I kind of just start turning the dial up a little bit, go back to the room, make the curtains black, you know, do a little, take a little nap, do a little meditation, do a little visualization and, and just who knows you know by then we probably got like three hours till we go to the arena maybe throw in a movie just something mindless not thinking about the fight too much mm. hit that arena um got some good tunes while i'm on the bus to the arena and then uh as soon as i walk in there it's uh it's mine it's my arena and and Again, we just slowly turn up that dial a little more intense, a little more intense, a little more intense. But we don't we don't turn it up right away because if you turn up that dial right away, you'll burn out. That's what mm -hmm. I've learned through my own experiences where I've turned it on first thing in the morning because I'm pumped and I'm ready to go. But I got eight hours 
you know so just having fun with it man like being be happy be you know this is what i it's what i love to do when i especially right now when i'm like i'm hungry i'm cutting weight i'm getting down to weight like you just want it to almost be over you want it to be fight day already because i'm in condition i'm ready to fight right now yeah. like i could fight today um but you have to be very careful because if you get in that mindset where you're so future focused, like thinking about the fight, the fight, the fight, the fight, you can actually miss the fight itself. So it's being in the moment every single day. And then again, back to June 10th. Now I'm there. I'm in the moment. I'm in the arena. I'm in the locker room, getting my hands wrapped in. Just That's it, man. It's, uh, it's almost go time. Shake out on the pads with the uh, gif will hold little sticks for me. Do a little wrestling grappling scenarios and then cool down, throw my hoodie on, start my pacing. That's when that's when shit gets real. Walk out, the music comes on. I'll be walking out second, taking in all the energy, taking in the you know the emotions, uh making connections with people in the crowd, just looking around, looking at my environment, just being present, right? Mm. Um, noticing the smell, the the sounds, the lights, uh, the feeling, the feeling of walking. I try to be very in tone with my senses. And then uh, when I get in there, you know, I say my prayer. And I, uh, you know, it's all, all the training takes over from there. You know, I'm just on autopilot from there on out. I love it. That's I love it, Dan. It's always a pleasure to catch up and get get some of your time, especially so after prior to such a big fight. Thank you as always yeah. for the time, um, and I wish you the best of luck for June tenth. Right on, brother. Good talking to you, Mike.